So once more, we're going to go for the easy way, because we like the easy way. It's less confusing. Basic combustion graph. Very similar to everything else. Once more, we're going to explode that. There we go. And we're going to want our burner again, because we, you know, it's a cauldron or a burner or whatever you like. Doesn't mean it can just hold things that are bubbling. We could set a fire in it. So that's, that's kind of what we're going to do now. And we're going to do very much the same kind of thing. Now you'll notice that there's an extra node here. Two, in fact, two extra compounds. Source fuel and combustion settings. We'll get onto that in a minute, but basically when you want to set something on fire, you need three things. You need a source of heat, you need some fuel, and you need oxygen. Those three things make fire. What we have here is a source of fuel, a source of... Oh, right, wrong one. A source of heat, and in here somewhere, oxygen. So like I said before, you're not so much simulating a fire as you are almost setting something on fire. So why don't I stop talking about it and let's do it. So first off, let's bring our cauldron in, pop that in there. Once more, that's going to be our collision. So we pop that into the collider and that's done. Everything's cool. Let's make a sphere. We'll get that out to a terminal so that we can position it and scale it properly. There it is. It's going to be about the same. So radius is 0.5. It's going to pop it inside the bit inside the cauldron for me. And I might just might just lift it up a little bit. Just a oh, not that much, just a smidgen. And again, we'll we'll give it some more segments. We'll take that up to 100 by 70. Cool. Ready to go. Let's plug that into our source. Once again, we're going to need to put a material in here. So assign material. We need an output. So let's get the volume to the geometry and the geometry to the output. And once more, I'm just going to right click on the material, Arnold Standard Volume Map. Cool. I'm just going to make a couple of adjustments here. This has got everything set up for us. You can see that the, the emission is set to back black body and the temperature channel is the voxel temperature. Let's just set the black body Kelvin down to 0 0.86 and the black body intensity is fine where it is. So we'll just leave that right now. Let's, uh, before we get anything going, let's adjust some parameters here. So we'll go to our source air and all I'm going to do is change the temperature mode to set. So the, the mode is set to temperature rather than rather than rate, because if we leave the temperature to rate, it's going to rise to completely unrealistic levels very, very quickly. It's pumping in 580 degrees of heat every time you go through the simulation, so every simulation step. So it's going to get pretty hot and we're trying to simulate, well, we're trying to do some, we're trying to do some fire, not, not simulate the surface of the sun. You've got some different settings now. Most of them are the same. Again, geo volume mode, I'm going to set that to be a slightly lower res, fluid detail size, fog density, all of this should be fairly familiar, but you've also got the new settings. Let's have a look at what we've got so far. So I'll just deselect the burner, reset the simulation and press play. And then we have some fire. Well, we have some burning stuff anyway. Let's zoom out a little bit, shall we? Not all that interesting right now. <laughs> Basically, it's a great big fiery mushroom. Let that play for a little while. But the point is we have ignition straight away. We have temperature. We have some sort of not quite so hot stuff in the middle, hot stuff at the top. Looking pretty good. Let's just start. First thing we're gonna do is look at our source fuel. So the fuel source is enabled, starts at frame one, and it goes on forever. It's just forever providing fuel. The fuel we're using is methane which ignites at 580 degrees. It's got a very high oxygen percentage right now. If we check out the help, see what it says about oxygen percentage. The percentage of oxygen in the oxidizer, for example, if it's set to 0 0.4, the oxidizer will consist of 40% oxygen and 60% nitrogen. Typically, if there's sufficient fuel, increasing oxygen percentage will lead to more violent explosions, increased flame propagation speeds and higher temperatures. So let's just drop that down a little bit. <laughs> Let's go to 0 0.7 and set our burn rate 0 
burn rate. Again, we'll look in the info. Value between zero and two that defines a, the oh, stoichiometry of the mixture of fuel and oxidizer. So zero leads to a smoky flame. Values below one can correspond to fuel rich conditions. Increasing values from zero to one gradually translate, transitions simulation from a smoky flame towards a cleaner burn. So we're, we're going to be quite low here. Let's have a look at that. We've still got our nice mushroom, very much a mushroom right now. So let's take a look at the solver settings. Again, very familiar stuff. I'm just going to take my buoyancy down to minus three. Let's set our style to fluffy. Solver's enabled. Let's see what this does for us. So once again, we've got the same problem. It's all very regular. So let's get on with some, some of the things we can do to try and fix that. Let's look at our combustion settings. So what we're going to do in here, we've got combustion on. That means that, that if that's turned off, nothing will catch on fire. Going to change our expansion scale a little bit to 0.1. What expansion scale is, is how fast the gas is expanding. Let's uh, let's give it some a bit less soot. So it's got nothing left over. And we'll oxidize the soot as well. It'll become invisible, basically. Let's have a look at that. That's certainly got, getting a little bit more interesting. Nice little uh, smoke ring going on there, but that's starting to look a little more fiery. We'll go to our combustion, stay in our combustion settings. I'm going to take a look at the radiative cooling here. What radiative cooling does, and remember this is all referencing natural laws and things like that. I would recommend you spend a lot of time in the info panel here. Just learning about stuff like I'm doing right now. Radiative cooling. Separate scaling factor applied to the radiative cooling to make the matter cool faster or slower. Higher values reduce the height of flames. The radiative cooling is governed by the Stefan Boltzmann law, which you could look up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually throw in a random into there. So we've got to give ourselves a little bit of sort of difference and it's going to be a time driven random. All right, so we'll put in our time node. Always good to have a time node. I'm going to take our frame out of here and we're going to make it into an integer. Like that. And then quite simply, we're just going to use a random value. The nice thing about random value, as opposed to using a noise, a noise will smoothly transition between one value and another. So there'll be an actual continuity of values in a noise. And a random value, they are literally just straight up random. So we'll plug that into here. So that what that's going to be doing is getting a different index of the random value array on each frame. So it's going to jump around pretty much. And we're not going to make this big random, but we're going to make it something like 0 0.9 to 1.1. And let's just plug that straight into the radiative cooling. Let's see what we get there. Okay, so we're starting to see a bit more variation in our flames now, which is nice. We're getting some smoke up the top here. And a lot of this is going to be about generating random values to go into this. So I think the next thing we should do, and don't forget too that you have options here. Again, I might just noisy up this sphere later on or I'll grab the one from the last one. So we've got a bit, a bit more of a variation in emission. I could add a vary source property here, but what I'm, what I'm trying to do now is vary the temperature. So I'm basically going to vary the temperature of the source here. Now I can do this with a vary source property, which will vary at each frame if I have animated switch on, switched on. What I'd actually like to do is vary it with a field. So that gives me a spatial change, which means there's different values at different points in space. So let's just quickly set that up. We've already got our time node. I'm going to use a fractal noise field because the temperature come in here into our source in general. Okay. Come into our source air properties. There's temperature there. We can see that it's a float. So I'm going to need a fractal noise field because a fractal noise field is scalar. It, it only uses float values. Okay. Again, I'm going to vary the time. So we'll just put in a multiply real fast set this to say 0 0.75 so we're just multiplying it down 
and we'll need a scalar field to convert that over to something that the fractal noise field will take as a time input like this let's just set up our field to see what it looks like so let's get a really high frequency so 1.2 and we'll pretty much leave everything else the same just a matter of grabbing that field and plugging it into the temperature now there's a problem fractal noise fields <coughs> Well, it's not a problem, it's just something you need to know. Fractal noise fields output, or fractal noise or fractal noise field, basically the math outputs roughly minus magnitude to magnitude. That's what these are working at. And this is going into temperature. If I'm to select my source here and break that connection, you can see my temperature starts off at 580. But this is outputting minus one to one. So what we're going to need is an F-curve field to remap that. And it's pretty simple. We'll just go in here and make sure we've got some Beziers. This guy, we're going to start this guy at about 400. So the value should be about 400 degrees. So that's not quite ignition. And this guy, we will set to somewhere up over, oh, well, definitely over 580. Let's go up to say 675, like that. And we'll frame our field so we can see it. Maybe we want a bit less of a transition. We'll bring that in there and we'll bring this in here so now we've got we're transforming minus one to one or roughly minus magnitude to magnitude to 400 to 675 let's get that into the temperature and then you can watch this play speed it up As you can see now we're really starting to look like a flame just with these few adjustments a little bit of smoke from the ignition but now you're really getting a good fiery look there okay we'll move on from there would it be really nice would be to add a bit of curling in this flame at the moment it's just powering straight up and then it's starting to get turbulence here let's use an influence to do that and i'm going to use a vorticity influence and that's going to add small scale vertices into the simulation so let's go for 0 0.3 let's keep it quite small and the scale of zero is fine let's just plug this into the influence rewind to reset the simulation and play again And you can see you're really getting that fire look just by adding those small vertices in there. I'm really happy with that. I hope you are too. It's looking pretty fiery. Let's uh, let's get that cached because I'm happy with it and I'm ready to show someone. So again, same thing. File cache. As this goes in there. We go in here and we set this up to our open VDB cache, we we'll change that to open VDB. Just call it fire for now. Dot hash 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 dot VDB. Enter. And it sometimes it pays to just check that that's worked and hasn't changed itself back to Bob. There we go. Save that. Now we don't want to take all of these attributes out. There's quite a lot more with with combustion than there is with just error. So really what we need are the ones that will help us shade it, which is voxel fog density and voxel temperature, as well as voxel velocity if we wanted to motion blur that fire. You can take any of these out as well if you want to and use them for something. But those would be the ones that I would take straight away. So let's get that sorted out. Go to the file cache. We want our voxel fog density. our voxel temperature and our voxel velocity. If you cache all of these out, you're going to have enormous caches on disk and it's going to slow you down. Only ever when you're working with volumes, whether that's smoke, fire, well, when you're working with simulations, even particles, what you want to do is take the absolute minimum that you need. And if you've missed something, you can always come back and resim it if you have to. But the idea is not to 
and the idea is to only take forward from here what you're going to use. So we'll plug that back into there. So it will disappear for now because it doesn't know what's going on. Make sure that this is set to write mode. Like that. It's going to go off and do the first frame and I will now pause the video and, and here we are. Let's change that back to read mode real fast so that we're not writing things out all the time. Here is frame 300. It is a good looking fire. Let's break that connection. And this time I got smart and put my assigned material after my cache. Rewind that. And let's take a look. So that's looking pretty good for fire. So now that we have the cache, you're able to do all kinds of cool things with this cache, even up to and including advecting point positions with little particles, which is something we'll be looking at next week. What would be good next week, guys, is if you could make me an explosion. And if you don't feel comfortable in making me an explosion with what we've learned today, there's one that's been prepared earlier for you. If you go to the Bifrost browser into Fire, Standard Explosion. Open that up, take a look at it, get familiar with it. Work out, see how it's working. Use what you've learned today and, and this video and, and all of that to go back and look through the Bifrost that builds this and see what you can work out and see if you can change it and make it better. That being said, that's pretty much everything. Here's the explosion file. You'll see, again, combustion settings, source fuel, bit of notation. All it's doing is varying the temperature using a very source property at this time. And yeah, so that's aero, that's combustion, that's particles, that's simulation. Hope it's helped and we'll catch up with you next time.